Hi, everyone, and welcome to our summer edition of Book Break. Today, my guest is Jenna, and she and I are going to be talking about summer reading books that you can either put in your beach bag or sit on your front porch or... Yeah, porch swing, some iced tea. Oh, porch swing and iced tea. Maybe some cobbler. Yeah, maybe an iced coffee. But uh, but we're leaning heavily on the romance. No one said beer. Maybe a beer. <laughs> what is this? What is this peach cobbler? <laughs> is, what? I'm sorry, I went real south for a second. <laughs> How about a GL? <laughs> All right, we'll we'll go for. You know what my favorite Jenny summer beer is? Which one? The the I'm still oh, a grapefruit, grapefruit Kolsch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you try the mango peach one? I Big did. Off topic. We can edit this out. I yeah, guess. Yeah. Too sweet for gross. me. Yeah. Okay. Didn't like it. How about you? Because you like the pineapple, right? I love it all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Big fan. All right. <laughs> so anyway, back, yeah. back to books. Yeah. <laughs> So I've been reading more romance to try to get ready for this okay. one. I think you you kind, of, kind of read of a lot. It's kind of my wheelhouse anyway. Yeah. I really go back between romance and like fantasy. Yes. So maybe romanticy. Romanticy. That's uh, that's my jam. That is, and that's getting to be an up and coming jam. Yeah, so I did that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just always on if trend. anybody cares, we just added romanticy spine labels to the collection. <gasps> so I do care. Be yes. On the lookout. Yes. Maybe moving some of my fiction things into Let's romanticy. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm we recognize those trends, folks. <laughs> Here so, for you. so anyway, my first one for vacation reads is one I just read recently. And it is by Jeff Sentner, who has written YA novels that I've really liked. But this is his first adult novel, and it's called Colton Gentry's Third Act. Okay. Um, came out at the end of April. So this one, as you might imagine, Colton Gentry is a country singer. I mean, that that name is perfect. He has been, he's living the dream. You know, (laughs) hits, um, married to another country star, just everything going his way until there is a mass shooting at a concert and a guitarist that was one of his very closest friends was killed. Oh. So now Colton is kind of, you know, he's he's in a bad place. So anyway, he's at a concert. He's drunk. And he decides to go on a rant about guns. And at a country concert, Timely. as you can imagine. I'm sure it went great. Yeah, it went really great. Uh-huh. Um, not so much. So he anyway, his his career, his marriage, pretty much everything in his life tanks after this one incident. Um, his wife's parting guest gift to him because she's she's kind of I think a tier above him, okay, like country Popularity. queen, Got you it. know, is a stay in rehab and to get himself straight you know, try to straighten himself out with this problem. So after imploding, you know, he goes to rehab and he decides to go back to his rural Kentucky hometown. And now he has resigned himself to, he's going to have to start like a new career. He needs a job. He needs money. He's living with his mom. I don't think his (laughs) life could get much worse. So anyway, he takes his mom out to dinner to this brand new farm to table restaurant that has opened up in Kentucky that is capturing lots of like local i'm thinking like southern living reviews you know a lot of local attention and who is in charge of the restaurant and the chef of course it's his high school girlfriend Uh, right (laughs) hallmark movie let's go yeah let's roll so anyway i kind of like this one though did Um, she like guns (laughs) (laughs) not stated yeah we're we're not going there sean (laughs) But anyway, you, you kind of get some backstory about how they met, um, you know, how the romance went, why they eventually broke off. She was the one that really suggested that he turn to a music career that oh. wasn't really originally in his wheelhouse. Um, but so he starts working at the restaurant because he needs a job. 
and really starts to discover that he likes food. So I would also recommend this to people that like foodie Foodies. because it's a, a farm to table restaurant. They go into a lot of their menus and everything. I well, like you and that. I would really like this. Yeah. You know, we're talking pimento cheese. We're yeah. talking biscuits, fried green tomatoes. We're, <laughs> we're talking all the great things. But um, he has to rationalize and come to terms with he's still getting a lot of flack from local people about this speech that he made and how he feels about it. But he does come to like a resolution. I don't want to give too much away. Okay. But he kind of makes peace and feels comfortable with who he is and where he is, but doesn't really – he doesn't change himself too much. Like – in a bad way. I mean, he's changed himself in a good way because he's not relying on alcohol. Sure. It's but like back to his he's, roots almost. Pardon me? Back to his roots. Yeah, back to his way. roots, but he's firm in his beliefs and feels comfortable with who he is. Oh, good. Yeah. But um, so I won't like go into too much about That's what happens fun. in the Ramets, but it does, it is, it is, it does end on a happier note. And the, the other funny thing is in order to get himself kind of like on track and have something to care for is that he adopts a shelter dog yes and it's an old dog yes but he goes he, he puts a little footnote in there like Petey will not die in this book so i'm like okay you thank know, god i can have a I lot of violence read. but for god's sake don't don't, don't kill, kill the, the, dog. the dog you know so thank you for jeff sender <laughs> for not killing Petey and letting us know that it was going to be okay but yeah so um this was interesting. I'd say if you like country music, music in general, because you get to see how he went up, you know, his roots in music and so forth, and also food. So And dogs. And dogs, naturally. Does yeah. he use the music as like a vehicle for his growth or for his transformation? Or Yeah. 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 Okay. Nice. And cool. ironically, the... The friend that died was a guitarist named Dwayne, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if he's well, named it. That's, um, you know, so, and of course, I like that too, being a big oh. Almond Brothers fan. Do you love them? Yeah. Okay. My first one, which is kind of funny that we matched in this way, starts off on a really dark note. It's a little content warning here. Um, it is How to End a Love Story, and the author, Yuling Kong, is Emily Henry's screenwriter for Emily Henry's movie adaptations of Beach Read and Book Lovers. Big Emily Henry fan. I will discuss her in the next book. Oh, and I'll be chiming in. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was curious how this author wrote, because I kind of wanted to see what if, if her style was compatible to Emily Henry, which is mm -hmm. why I picked it up in the first place. Um, and it's her debut novel. She's a screenwriter full time and just wrote a novel, like a romance novel. So it's called How to End a Love Story. Um, <laughs> the main character, Helen, is a Chinese-American. Um, and it starts off when she's in high school or senior year of high school. And her little sister commits suicide by stepping in front of a car that her classmate is driving. Oh, no. There's the content warning. It's not very graphic. It doesn't go into the detail, but it's kind of there. Um, and so, obviously, the character that's driving the car, Grant, is um, Helen's classmate. And they didn't really run the same social circles to begin with. Helen was a buttoned up, smart class, uh, grade A student. And uh, Grant is like the jock type. Mm -hmm. um, so he didn't really know her or her sister. And he immediately is obviously very remorse remorseful. But Helen and his her family just completely write him off. They don't talk to him ever again. They graduate high school and Helen goes to New York City. Grant goes to LA to become a screenwriter. And Helen creates this YA teen series mega popular um and like there's a little time jump so it goes from when she's 18 to like 35 okay um and her books are now becoming a tv show so she flies out to la and who would be the screenwriter oh. but grant shepherd yes <laughs> who she knew from high school so there, it's kind of funny she's immediately like no you have to quit i don't want you here i don't want to think about you um I don't want to hear it. And he's like, no, I need this job. I'm keeping it. And it's very interesting, their dynamic to go through um, kind of their grief and his guilt and all of this stuff. It does a really good job dealing with the mental health, I thought. Um, eventually, they're working together and they fall in love. Of course, it's a romance. Um, and 
it's it's fun to watch them deal with that complicated past while also creating a future for themselves mm -hmm. and their respective families and how they dealt with that traumatic situation from years ago. Um, I thought it was really charming. It, it does start in a dark place, but it really works its way out of that. Um, and it's kind of a nice blend. It's more like a literary fiction romance than the true, like, romance that you get right you know like okay. Bridgerton or whatever um so I thought it was charming you know it's it brought mental health to the forefront in a nice tasteful way mm -hmm. I recommend it so I imagine he was pretty traumatized yeah I feel he that a lot committed it suicide it's not that. like he hit her by accident or... correct yeah yeah okay. it, it was like on a highway situation you know, okay. he wouldn't have known right um yeah, it does deal with that quite a bit. He has PTSD and a lot of panic attacks and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because yeah. I am also jumping into what I thought Another was... Person? Yeah, well, it has a kind of a some darkness to it, okay. but it is a romance. And I picked it up because it has an absolutely stunning cover. It, um, the colors, I think, are beautiful. Yes, it's called Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. And she's a romance author that I've been hearing more yeah, and more is. about. I believe yeah. her book that was right before this one, Yours Truly, won yes. like Book of the Month Club, it Book of huge. the Year. Um, and I haven't read that one. And I just found out just for the summer involved some of the characters set in a world. Like this is the third book in that world, but you don't have to read them in order. Okay. You can enjoy each of them separately. I have a quick comment about Abby Cominess. Okay. She... It's a wonderful author, but also I saw this week on TikTok that someone, a military wife, had created a book club on some base, and they were reading just for the summer, and no one showed up, and Abby Jimenez saw the video and sent her all of this PR stuff for the book, and is hosting a virtual book club with this wife. <laughs> oh my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? That is. Well, yeah. here's another weird thing about Abby Jimenez. Is she was a chef on one of the cooking shows. Really? I, I can't remember which one, but she has a cupcake bakery somewhere. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, she seems like a great woman. Yeah. And she also, I know another librarian here, Molly, likes her because she puts a lot of TikTok videos of her dogs up. And mm -hmm. Molly was like, that is why she started reading her. Really? Because of her funny dog videos. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, she's a pastry chef. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I want to say it's called Nadia Cup. Nadia, Nadia Cakes. Cakes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, this book was set in a lake in, I believe, Minnesota. So, um, And they're all in the same world. Yes, kind of. I think there's the first three. But anyway, here's the premise of this book. Okay. All right. We, we have Justin. And Justin has a curse. Thanks to a Reddit thread, it's now all over the internet. Okay, whenever Justin stops dating someone, they go on to meet their soulmate. And uh, yeah, it's called called the kiss curse. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, when he posts <laughs> this, uh, the young woman, what's her name? So he owns the Reddit thread he's posting on this? Yes. Right. But okay, so now we have Emma, and she's a traveling nurse, but she has a very similar curse. So when he posts this video, when everyone's laughing, she messages him and says, you're never going to believe this, but I have the same curse. You know, whenever yeah. I stop dating someone, they go on to wonderful future happiness and, you know, all kinds of things. So they decide to meet up and try fake dating <laughs> to maybe eliminate the curse. Yeah. So anyway, right. it sounds very fun, very light. Yeah. But this is what's different is um, Abby Jimenez also incorporates a lot of like mental health and, and different themes. Yeah. Um, so Emma, she's a traveling nurse, but one of the reasons she has such commitment issues is because her mom pretty much left her and mm. she lived with different foster families. So she had a very turbulent, yeah, turbulent start to her life. Um, Justin, or is his name Justin? Yes, Justin. <laughs> um, his mom is getting ready to head to prison because she stole money from her company, and now oh. he is going to be the guardian of his younger siblings. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, thanks a lot, thanks, Mom. Mom. <laughs> thanks for that. So anyway, you have these two people that are kind of grappling with very serious things. Yes. But yet... 
also trying to have this fake dating relationship. Well, of course, you know, they're drawn to each other. The thing that I really liked about this is Justin is really funny. And before he goes out on the dates, he sends her like almost like a survey monkey questionnaire. I love that. <laughs> and some of the things are really funny. Like, what do you want? You know, and he has this apartment and it's looking out over a billboard of like a toilet guy. <laughs> So there's a lot of very light and funny things in yeah. here. So it doesn't get too heavy handed, but yet you obviously know, like at first, is this or isn't this going to work out? Because, you know, both these people are dealing with issues and right. they're very honest about that. Like he's pretty much scared to death about, you know, taking care of my siblings. Am I going to mess this up? Is young? there room for someone, you know, in my life? And um, And she doesn't know if she's in a place to take that on either. So it had a very um, a very good ending, I thought. And I really thought it was was fun and it handled everything in a pretty pretty decent way. Like I will definitely read more of hers. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be for everybody. Like I you know I, uh, one of our coworkers, she didn't like it as much um, because probably because of the themes that it's not what people would think of in a typical romance but yet right that's like my book was yeah yeah definitely yeah but i i think that's getting to be more you know in some ways you're gonna have two camps like one that's gonna a want little. a more realistic romance and well, others want just like the bridgerton i thing. could talk about this forever probably yeah. but there are times when i do want to read a romance and i'm like i don't want anything real i just want to pretend that i'm in this fantasy right. world yeah and then there are times where i'm like well that would never happen in real life give me some like Grit. Yeah. 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 So I actually really like this one. Good. Looks like it was a Good Morning America book club pick. Okay. That would yeah. check out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whoever does her covers, kudos to you because. Yeah. It's really oh, yeah. That was, a, that was a fantastic cover. Mm -hmm. So. All right. So what's your All next right. one? It's my girl. My girl, Emily Henry. <laughs> I love her. Um, I think I talked about Happy Place last spring. Or we talked about it together. So yeah, and I've I talked am. about book lovers. That was one of my favorites. So good. I don't know if we've ever done Beach Read, but that one's good too. No, my daughter borrowed that and I never got it back. You so. never read it? No, I haven't read that one. So I'm oh just going to have God. to check it out for the library now. <laughs> yeah, that one, out of all of hers, that one's up there in the top two for me. Okay. Still. And that was, I think, her first one. So. I think it was her first one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is funny story though. And when this, so Happy Place came out last spring. And right when I finished reading it, pretty much a month after that, she announced Funny Story. And I was like, oh, dang, <laughs> it's on. Not only is the cover like a beautiful purpley blue color, which I love, it's also about a children's librarian, which is really near and dear to my heart. So mm -hmm. I was like, this is for me. I had all of the hype for it. I was ready. And it lived up to the hype. And I'm excited to hear your take because I don't think we've discussed it at length. No, I really like this one too. Yeah, it's really good. Chime yeah. in where you feel like you need to. Okay. Okay. So um, I read it as an arc, which was great. I'm very thankful. And I also reread it when I got it in the mail. So it's pretty fresh on my mind. So I'm really into it. So the main character is Daphne. She's a children's librarian, very buttoned up. She's engaged to the love of her life. They had a spectacular meet cute where a hat blew off and he caught it type thing um and <laughs> they bought this beautiful house in michigan which emily henry also all of her books are in the same place they're mm -hmm. in the same world so they kind of all exist in michigan and this is also um, a lake town it is it kind of reminded me of yeah of mine a it's little cool bit. i like it because she yeah. drops little easter eggs of other books in there anyway she's just moved back to this is peter's hometown her fiance um, and they bought this beautiful Victorian home and everything's perfect and charming. And he leaves her the night of his bachelor party a couple months before his wedding for his childhood best friend. Yeah. Wasn't that great of Peter? <laughs> yes. Isn't that great? The night of. Seen it a um, hundred times. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's always the childhood best friend. She's beautiful. Her name's Petra. Um, and immediately is like, we'll be back in a week from our fabulous vacation. Daphne, you got to move out. She's like, oh, great. I hate this town. I just moved here for you. What am I going to do? Right. So she, she has no choice. She just got a job. She just got a job. Student loan. She's counting down the day yeah. she, till, until she can leave when she finishes this big library project. And what can she do except move in with Petra's ex, Miles? Right, because he now needs a roommate. Correct. 
So she moves into a shoebox room with all of her wedding stuff shoved in a closet that she's firmly avoiding and just kind of gets through the first couple of weeks being newly single, living with a stoner, (laughs) messy, crock-wearing, rude, like, Miles, okay? And she's like, we don't talk. He is heartbroken, blasts his heartbreaking music in his room, and we just kind of ignore each other. Um, Until she comes home from work one day, and Miles is on the couch, face down, with a bottle of wine. (laughs) And she's like, what's up? He's like, look at the table. And it's a wedding invitation for Peter and Petra's wedding two months from now. Right? Right. So now they're like, oh, well, great. Obviously, they wallow. But the solution now is... Revenge. Revenge. What if we got together, fake dating, and really stuck it to him? So that's kind of where the book begins. It branches off from that. They start fake dating. Daphne has... Um, a big library project, like a readathon thing that she's doing. Um, Miles has hidden depths that you get into. Um, yeah, Miles is actually. I, he's I really like such Miles. a good character. He says like, and the one thing I liked is you're stuck in this town, so I'm going to show you around and yes, show that you is, yes what's good in this. town. It was a great component yeah. to it. I thought it was wonderful. He does a really good job at like helping her let her hair down a little bit. And Mm -hmm. she does a good job at like being like, okay, let's also maybe use a whiteboard to write our schedule on it. You know, like things like that. It was, they, they really, um, balanced each other out in a nice way. Um, and so they're fake dating and, you know, they're navigating this new life and they obviously, you know, they maybe or maybe not fall in love. I really like this one too. I loved it. Yeah. I, I think it, it is up there with my, my favorite Emily Henry. Mm-hmm. As always, her banter and some of the things are just yes. laugh out loud funny, which yes. I enjoy. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a light read with some depth. Because, it is. Well, you know. she always has like these really strong themes of found family and f- especially female friendship mm-hmm. and just kind of finding yourself. She does a great job at that, mixing it in with like the lighthearted love stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love her. No, I think I think she's like a perfect summer read. Oh, she's great. Yeah. So now I got to go back and read Beach Read. You, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. So my next one, it's like the one time uh, when my coworker Kirsten and I started this podcast, we did summer reading, and Kirsten and I were both heavy into murder. Kirsten likes sci-fi, yeah. and somebody was yeah. like. One of the comments was like, this is horrible. You don't even have a book like Ellen Hillebrand, who is the queen of beach reads. So, you know what? I've just never read Ellen Hildebrand, but I did for you people today. Um, and ironically, she is coming out with soon her last book called The Swan Dive. comes out June 11th, but it's the last of her Nantucket novels. This woman has written 25 of these About things. About Nantucket. Yeah, yeah. They're all, yeah. yeah her all covers said, are all like beautiful beach. Oh my gosh, yeah. Stunning. She's another one that she yeah. ought to thank her cover artist. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, she has a, it's like a brand. You see that cover and you're exactly. like, oh, that's Ellen Hildebrand. Right. Yeah. So um, the one I read was published in 2022 and it was called The Hotel Nantucket. Mm-hmm. Um, so this one starts fresh off a, a breakup with her longtime boyfriend, you know, who she, she has discovered cheating when she picks up a phone, you know, to take a group picture at a restaurant. Classic. Um, is Nantucket sweetheart, Lisbeth, Lisbeth. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have a hard time That's with fine. that one. Lisbeth Keaton. You can call her Lady And, um, so now she is desperately seeking a second act because she met her husband. They ran this restaurant together. So okay. she thought they were, you know, they were not married, but they were longtime partners and had been through a lot together. So this was really a real heartbreaker for mm-hmm. her. Um, this wasn't like a dalliance. But anyway, so she <laughs> gets this new job. A, a British millionaire has bought an old, decrepit, kind of once nice but now run to ruin Mm -hmm. hotel and he has spared no expense in refurbishing it 
which this is where I find these kind of things funny. So you you spend <laughs> like thirty million dollars refurbishing this restaurant to the oyster shell showers and all the yeah. Nantucket blue cashmere throws, but you hire a woman to run the restaurant that has. Or not Zero restaurant, experience. but the hotel that has no hotel management yeah. experience. First of all, that's a dream job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think the salary was like 150 or something. Yeah. They mentioned it, and I listened to the first 30 minutes of this book in preparation. Yeah. yeah, but to me, that doesn't even seem that high for the kind of stress that you're going to have fair. with this kind of job. But anyway. And he's a millionaire. So. Yeah, of course he's a millionaire. But um, <laughs> but she doesn't fall in love with him. So. Okay. Actually, I didn't know that. That's Spoiler That's right good. there. <laughs> um, so the one thing that Xavier has asked her to do is he said that this hotel, he wants to impress two women. He doesn't tell oh. her who the first one is, but the second one is a woman named Shelley Carpenter who writes these hotel reviews. They come out at the end of each month, and she has never given a five-key review. Game and on. he wants it. Game on. Yes. Yeah. So game on for that. So anyway, you go through, she's hiring people, and of course, one of the the things that Xavier has done is he's hired this very well-known chef that was in Nantucket, that left Nantucket, to come back and manage the bar. And the bar sounds fabulous. I would like to visit this bar. Yeah. So um, naturally, you have that and a possible romance ensuing with oh, this with hot the chef. chef. Yes. Got it. Um, but then the other weird, quirky thing is this hotel is haunted. Sweet. By, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you, that took a turn. I did yeah, not see this, coming. This one was pretty good. It's a young chambermaid. <laughs> in 1922, a tragic fire burned in the hotel, Ooh. and they found a body up in the fourth floor. Come to find out, she was having an affair with... The chambermaid? Yes, the chambermaid, the owner of the hotel, <gasps> and I, his wife found out. So she wants someone to know how she died, and why she died. <laughs> this is why she's haunting the hotel. Okay. So, Get it, um, girl. Will Lisbeth find romance with the chef of the blue bar? <laughs> will someone find out if Grace was murdered? And each one of the death steps, there's a lot of characters in this okay. book. They all have their own little story filled with drama, too. Okay. Apparently, the people of Nantucket love to gossip. Let's go. Yeah. Island life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know. Word gets out. Yeah, it's it's a fun read, you know. Yeah. I don't know if it's for me, but I can see <laughs> the appeal yeah. of why people like them. Um, Sounds pretty goofy. It I'm does honest. sound goofy. <laughs> yeah. It was it, a little much. Well, I, I have a problem with what I call my, what is the word? You know, yes, yeah. my oh, suspension of sure. disbelief. Like, it's yeah, been an okay. ongoing problem for me. So a lot of yeah, things that it. people really like, for some reason, it just sets off that that flag in me, and mm -hmm. I just I can't go there. Well, she's a bestseller, so I know. So a she's lot of people do. Following. I I'm sure Ellen Hildebrand could care less what Claire <laughs> Claire thinks. But there you go. Now, is this her her new book, her last book ever, or just last book for Nantucket? I, I know I saw it was last book for Nantucket. Okay. But maybe she's moving on to a different island. Yeah. And I believe she lives there, so makes me wonder how she like wraps up that whole yeah. universe. I know. Oh man, she I don't know something. whether hey, what these happens people with the ghost. Well she just well, I won't tell you. Okay. I won't Dang tell it. you. Yeah. I guess I'll have to keep listening to yeah, the audio. I don't book. wanna I don't wanna do spoilers, so Okay. Yeah, fair enough. No spoilers. All but right. I wanna know. You can tell me after. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, as ever, you and I are same wavelength because my next book deals with hotels and ghosts. Oh, my gosh. And food, which Nantucket doesn't. We did not even, like, we plan didn't, this. We didn't plan this. Um, so, this is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. She's pretty popular. She wrote In Five Years. And I then, read that one, the In Five Years. Yeah, she has another one coming out. Did you read this one? I did not read the Okay, you're the about to. Italian one. I liked In you're Five Years. To. It was good. Um, I liked this one better. Okay. Um, for one reason, and I'll get to that. So this book, it's obviously based in Italy. And if you're looking for a book that makes you feel like you're sitting next to the ocean in Italy on the Amalfi Coast, this is it. Well, how could that be bad? It's not. <laughs> it's not bad. So um, the main character, her name is Katie, and she and her mother, Carol, are like fast best friends. They've done everything together. 
Um, and they're planning this trip to the Amalfi Coast, which is where her mom spent the summer before she met her husband, so before she met Katie's father. So it's like 30 years ago her mom lived in Italy and is wanting to experience that with her daughter. Fortunately, before they get to do this, two weeks before her mom passes away. Oh, no. Sad. It's a, it's starts at a low place, but it quickly comes out of it. So... Katie's like, well, I'm going to go because I, I want to experience what my mother did. Maybe it'll give me a piece of her that I never mm-hmm. got to see. So she goes, um, and she's staying in the same hotel her mother did. It's a rundown hotel. Um, it used to be, I guess, when her mother was there, fabulous and beautiful and, and well-spoken of, but now it's kind of gotten, gone down quite a lot in the shambles. Um, so she's staying there, and there's, like, two other people staying there. And it's they're really good characters. They're kind of funny. Um, so there's those relationships are great. So she's on this island. She's starting to feel like herself again, starting to go to these places that she knew her mother had gone to and written about and told her about when she's on a hike and she sees her mother as a 30 year old. Oh my gosh. So her mother, Carol is now 30 years old, same year old as Katie. They're both the same age. And Katie obviously is like, well, I can't tell her she's my mother. Yeah. So they spend the entire summer together Carol is showing Katie what it was like to live in Italy, what her favorite places are. They just become really good friends as 30-year-olds. And Katie's dealing with this whole, like, oh, this is my mom. This is really weird. Do I tell her? Um, So along the way, of course, there's that story, and there is a little bit of a romance in there with one of the hotel guests. Um, But really, it's more about the love she has for her mother, seeing what her mother was like as a 30-year-old, the secrets that her mother had as a 30-year-old. Uh-oh. And um, also extremely descriptive food dialogue. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that has my name this on it. This author describes the food and the wine and the sun and the ocean with such detail that it, I listened to the audiobook. Amazing. Amazing. It made me feel like I was drinking white wine on a boat. It was so good. That sounds I wonderful. I recommend it for that alone. But also it's a beautiful story okay. of motherhood relationships loss, grief, finding yourself, you know, the whole shebang. That sounds really good. Sounds like it nailed it. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 All right. So we were going to give you as a bonus, since we're only doing one episode in June, some of the things that we're looking forward to reading. Yeah. Um, And you and I have both read this author, Ashley Poston. Big fan. She is coming out with a book uh, called A Novel Love Story, actually right after this comes out on June 25th. Ooh. So she wrote The Dead Romantics and The Seven Year Slip. Which, Both I love. Yeah, Seven, seven Year, Year Slip, slip top was tier. Boop, yeah. you know, great, very good, very great good. summer read. So this, she does a little bit of magical realism, I'd yeah. say, in all of hers. So this one, a quick summary, Al Eileen is um, going on a girl's trip. She okay. is an author and she ends up in a fictional town, like on her going to her girl's trip. I got very Brigadoon vibes from this. Yeah, okay. And of course, there's a romance there in the town and everything. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm so excited. Yeah, so, and it sounds like this is a little bit of grumpy sunshine, like the guy is a grumpy bookstore owner in the town. Just my type. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So Yeah, I love her. She's kind of an auto auto check out auto buy author for right me. yeah yeah okay my first looking forward to book is um, called business casual by bk borison this is kind of um an underground read for me or maybe just in general um she wrote a series called love light farms yes the one the christmas tree the farm christmas lady tree farm lady okay so that's the first book and there's this is now the fourth one. So the other three deal with other characters from that first book. So okay. it's all in the same town. But each character has their own romance story. This is the next installment of that. I think it's the last one, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. And we read that or listened to that on Hoopla, too, right? I think so. after you read it, I think I read yeah, the Yeah, I Christmas read the physical one. copy, but I think you did listen to it on Hoopla, okay. which is great at Christmas, very Christmassy, very fun. Um, this one seems to be a little bit more like... Um, big city business Hallmark lady type energy. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that one. That one comes out in July. Sounds fun. Yeah. 
All right, the next one I'm looking to, I must be into the paranormal thing. It's called The Love of My Afterlife by Christy Greenwood. It comes out July 2nd. And this one, a recent, I, I don't even know how they're going to pull this off. A okay. recently deceased woman meets the one <laughs> in the afterlife waiting room, scoring what? a second chance at life and love if she can find him on earth before 10 days are up. Yes. Yeah. Sign me up. I know. Sounds fun. So... Um, so if she wasn't that. dead already, she would be already dying of embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> she died on choking in a microwavable burger. Oh, so, yeah. that's the worst way to go. I know. How embarrassing. So hopefully, hopefully she redeems herself and get a <laughs> second so. chance. I and haven't heard about that, romance. but I will be reading it. Yeah. <laughs> Like a White Castle burger. I know. Yeah. Sean's gonna, Sean's gonna read it. Sean's gonna read it now. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Okay. Uh, now my last looking forward to book. I'm kind of cheating because it comes out in September. Oh, I know so what I'm this sorry. one's gonna be. It's the sequel to The House by the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Oh my! It's called Somewhere Beyond the Sea. I'm so excited. This is ki- it's kind of a um, cozy fantasy, but also ro- like an LGBTQ romance. Mm-hmm loved cerulean sea that that is like top 10 books ever in my life that i've read um it's fabulous it's warm it's cozy so this is a sequel it seems like it's mostly around the um one of the main characters the other orphanage owner yes which sounds weird but you're just gonna have to read cerulean sea to really get that but um i can't wait I can't wait for another magic. You know what? Adventure. I was really excited because I saw on NetGalley that cover, and it's only an <gasps> excerpt. I have it, Dang but I haven't yeah. read it yet. Is it yet. good? Yeah, I haven't read it yet. Yeah. Kind of waiting. Just, as we a, could. just a quick rundown. Cerulean Sea is a, like a magical realism type world mm-hmm. where all of these, um, basically like humans, of course, but they're also some like monsters and magical characters. And the young ones that are kind of outcast are sent to an orphanage and hidden away and the main character in Cerulean Sea is trying to like vouch for these characters right he's supposed to be an inspector but he's kind of a loving bumbling character yes and he doesn't have the heart to shut down the orphanage and right yeah it's very good no it is good yeah so we have some great choices for you um a reminder that we only have one book break episode in the months of june july and august thank you so much for coming in i'm so happy to be here i know you were so much fun (laughs) to talk books with jenna so we will resume our twice twice a month schedule in september and for those of you that like to read about murder and mayhem, um, <laughs> tune in in July when Molly and I discuss oh, some fun. thriller and suspense novels. Because I'm always reading murder, those. Murder, Mayhem, and Molly. Yep, Murder, Mayhem, and Molly. So thanks so much, and we will see you later this summer. Bye-bye. Book Break is a production of the Grease Public Library, made possible through the support of the Friends of the Grease Public Library. Theme music composed and performed by Sean Gore.